We are going to be on section 13, which is circle of complex figures and solids. So we're back on math today. Uh, a couple of things that you need to remember, definitely when you're dealing with circles. Uh, the main thing is you're going to almost always going to be you're almost always going to be looking for a radius. If they don't give you the radius, they're going to give you enough information usually to find the radius, and then you're going to use that to find whatever it is you're looking for. When we get to the complex figures, look for right angles and, and of course right triangles. Because once you get those, again, that's going to help you solve the problem. So let's go ahead and look at uh, starting with circles. Looking at page 430. We've got some fill in the blanks. And if you'll get with, or go with me on that, I'd appreciate it. First one, a circle consists of points in a plane that are equidistant from a given point called B what? Okay. Well, obviously, you've got technically these are all points that make that up. So your first one in the center. All right. Second one there, going to the right. How many degrees are there in a circle? Okay. Fill it in. And of course, that's based on your angles that are here. So you're going to have 360 all the way around. Okay, the distance from the center to any point on the circle is called what? What is this black line here? Radius. All right. Is this other black line also a radius? Yeah. Okay. Then the next one to the right, distance across the circle to the center is called what? Okay, so you just extend your radius. That becomes your diameter. Okay, and up here. And then the diameter is twice what? Okay. So this is your radius, this is your radius, and all the same. And I'll just be your diameter. Okay? The longest line in the circle then is what? Diameter. Okay, so in most of these, like I said, you're going to need to find the radius. Sometimes I'll give you the diameter, sometimes you'll give the radius. But the formulas that we use, generally you're going to be looking for circumference and area. So what is the circumference formula? Or? Okay. ID. Okay. And make sure you know both of those because, again, if they give you diameter in your question stem, it doesn't make any sense to convert it to radius and use the radius formula. You may have to, it may save you time. So, know both the 2 pi r and the uh, id on your circumference. So, then what is your area? How do you say it? Okay. i times the radius squared. Okay. So, you've got uh, obviously your circumference and the distance around your area is the entire in, inside the circle. So, look at question number one. One other thing, when they mention circumference, sometimes they will actually call it perimeter. Usually perimeter is used on um, like polygons and that kind of thing, but sometimes they will call it perimeter. Just use those interchangeably. Perimeter and circumference will be the same thing. So go ahead, uh, Alex, read question number one for us. Okay, so, so looking at our Kaplan method, step one, what is the question? What are they asking us? Okay, so step one is the, the perimeter of the two pieces, right? Okay, step two, what information did they give us? Okay, so this, this line is 6, the center is an O, right? Okay, what else? Anything else they gave you? They didn't really give us more information, but they gave us something else to do to solve the problem or sort of solve the question. And what did they, what did they ask for this? Okay, so they said cut it in half. Alright, so what does that, what does that look like when we cut it in half? It's obviously two half circles, right? Okay. So now what do we do? If they're asking for the perimeter, or what was the other word we said? For the circle? Circumference. 
They're asking for circumference. What do we know our formula is? Okay. All right. They gave us the diameter, so let's use pi d. So what is our circumference of this circle? Okay. Circumference is pi times the diameter. The diameter was 6. So the circumference is 6 pi, right? Okay. All right. So uh, what else do we do here? Is that our answer? Okay, so we've got the distance around, which is all of this. Okay, so what else do we need? Okay, we've got two diameters because we cut it. And we said there how much? So what is our total of our two diameters? Okay, so add those two and add the circumference we got from over here, and what is our answer? Is that one of the answers? given there. Yeah. Okay, so are we finished, step four? Did we answer the question? Yeah. Okay, very good. All right, so now that we know what, how to work with the radius, let's talk about lines that are going to be changed into circles. On that next page, we've got a couple of lines to fill in there. And we'll talk about those. Okay, at the top, a line what, tangent to a circle is what to the radius of the point contact. So you look at the figure they have there, you got a line tangent to the circle. What is that in relation to the radius at the point of contact? Do we have a right angle there? Okay, so what is it if we have a right angle? Perpendicular. Thank you. Okay. Now why is that important? Any idea? One of the main reasons that's important is because it's going to create a, a right angle we talked about in the figure. And then you've got a tangent that's going to create a right angle. But a lot of times that's going to create a right triangle. Again, we said we're looking for right angle. We're going to be looking for right triangle. A lot of times that's going to be the way to solve these problems. Okay, so we have a problem number two there on the page. And uh, Wes, did you read that for us? Okay. Let's go back to our capital method, step one. What is step one? What is the question, right? Okay. And step one is you want to know what the area of the circle is, right? Okay. Did I leave anything out here? Or just some letters and things. Okay. So what else do we know about what do we know about this? What information have they given us? And the question is that what information do we have? Okay. So A D is here, standing in point B. And what else do we have? And why do you think Okay, so ED is also tangent. What do we say a tangent line to the circle creates? Okay, creates a right angle because it is perpendicular. So we know that, we already know this is a right angle. If we were to extend this line, is that creating a right angle here and a right angle here? Okay, where else does it create a right angle? Right there in the center, right? Okay, so we've got a square, we've got four right angles. So what can we do? Again, we talked about we've got, what kind of a triangle did we just create this? Okay, as I saw something, we have a right, right triangle here. So that's the information. So step three, again, what can I do with this information? I'm trying to find the area of the circle. What was our area formula? Okay. So obviously pi doesn't change. So we need to find the radius. And in that figure, what is the radius? Okay, but what, where is it in the figure? Okay. Well, we have four. Okay. 
So let's just let's extend this over and let's take this out of the figure and let's work with it, right? Okay, is that what we're that what we're looking at as far as just the triangle itself? And if we find this side or this side, can we solve our solve our problem? Again, we're looking for pi times the radius squared for the area of the circle, so we need to find those. Okay, so what do we know? Uh, you mentioned earlier, Wes, what kind of a triangle is that? Okay, anything else about it? What about the angle? Okay, so we have a 45, 45, 90. What do we know about that? Okay, well we have a 45, 45, 90. That's going to give us, again, the sides are going to be, you know, you can say 1, 1 root 2 or x, x, x root 2, right? Y'all remember that? Okay, so we need to make sure we know those, okay? So now we can solve for, so we know what information did they give us. Did they give us the length of the F? Yeah. And what is it? Two. All right. So they told us that this side is 2. So can we set this formula equal to 2? Can we say x root 2 equals 2 and solve for x? Okay, so how do we do that? By both sides by root 2. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Mm -hmm. Let's not rationalize yet. Let's see if we can see if we can solve it without having to do that yet. It may actually come out easier. So we actually have x equals two over root two, right? Okay. So if we did that, then what's our next step? Okay. So we said the area equals pi times the radius squared. We just said that this, which is the radius, is two over root two. So what is by two over what is two over root two squared? Okay, two squared is four, right? Root two squared is so the answer is two pi. Okay, so we're saying that is the answer. Is that is that our answer? Okay, you saw how actually not not getting the radical out of the denominator actually it will be easier in this case. Sometimes you may have to, but this, in this case it works out great. Okay. Any questions on that? Everybody follow all those steps. So again, anytime you see a figure like this, you know, look for those right angles. You know, you're almost always going to have to find the radius. And in this case, you just use the formulas you know, the 45, 45, 90, uh, the sides are x, x, x root 2, and you just work your way backwards. And most of these problems are going to be that way. They're going to be like putting together a puzzle. Maybe I'll ever do big tall puzzles or anything like that. Yeah, no, everybody's laughing at, everybody's laughing at me. Um, that's something we like to do around Christmas time. But, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. You've got you know certain pieces of the puzzle, and then you have to plug them in. You have to use them the right way. Okay, so let's go to complex figures. Um, they're somewhat challenging, but let's see how that goes. Let me ask you this, when you think about a circle, is there a favorite food that kind of resembles a circle? Pizza. Pizza. Muffin. Muffin? Okay. Yeah, there's lots of possibilities for that answer, but we're going to talk a little bit about pizza today. Did y'all have lunch? Yeah, we did. I had pizza for lunch. Okay. I ate fried. You ate what? Fried. Fried? What's that? Yeah, that one. Oh, I know. Uh, Excuse me. <laughs> oh, I didn't have a terrible part. You didn't? But you do know how to put a little bit. Uh huh. Okay. Congratulations. I thought you were bringing like cookies or something if you had Well, I never prayed for the I can't make them out loud. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about it. Again, we're talking about uh, some circles, arcs, and sectors, and that kind of thing. Um, let's say Alex is really hungry. 
Is that typical of us? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. What do we know on a pizza or on a circle? What is the total degree measure of that? 360. Let's say Alex is really hungry today. I want to. Let's give him this much. I don't know what that adds up to. Actually, let's give him this part down here. This was. Okay. Anyway, back here. Let's say we give him 160 degrees of that pizza. Okay? Big chunk of pizza, right? Okay. What we know is that, and if you look at on, on your page 432, they've got some formulas that are actually some proportions that if you look at the part that we gave him over the whole pizza, you've got 160 over 360, okay? So what they're saying there is that the fraction is 160 over 360. Now what we can do with that, if you look at the fill in the blanks, both of those should say fraction of 360. Okay, you've got the length of an arc as a fraction of the circumference equal to the degree measure of the corresponding central angle with a fraction of 360. That may not make any sense in words, but let's talk about what that really means. If you look at this pizza, what part of the, of the circle would be the crust? The outside part? Okay. So if we send the crust, interestingly enough, those letters, I mean, it starts with a C. That's the wrong thing. So it comes from the crust back. I think that's in circumstance. Crust down. Yes. So the crust equals the circumference. We both start with C. So that's the outer edge, okay? Now, do we know the distance on a circumference? What was our formula? Okay. No. Again, that's our circumference. Okay. So the length of the of the corresponding arc of the sector length or the piece of pizza that Alex is eating. The piece of crust, the length of that arc over our circumference will equal the same proportion that we just had here, 160 over 360. So we've got the arc length, okay, in this case we're still at 160 over 360. Right? Eventually this is all going to make a little more sense. Now what about the inside of the pizza? All the good stuff here. Okay, okay you've got the area. We've got the area of the piece of the slice, right, over the area of the entire pizza. Now that's going to equal the same thing. So we have the uh, the area of the sector of the piece over the area of the circle. Right? Now all three of those are going to be equal. So if you look at any time you've got something like this, where they give you the area of the sector over the area of the circle equals the, the 1 over 360. What's it going to be? It's going to be your, your sector angle. We'll call that. And all of that then is going to equal what? Okay. Your arc length over your circumference. Okay. Now, which of those items never changes? Which of these six items doesn't never change? The three sigma. Right. Your your measure of your entire angle of your of your circle is not going to change. Okay. Which, which but you also have two formulas. The, they, the formulas themselves don't change, right? Your area of your circle and your circumference of your circle. So as long as you remember these relations or these proportions, if they give you this piece and they give you this piece, can you solve this one? Okay. You know, can you solve these two? Not necessarily, but if they give you this one, you can solve for the other one. So just remember those proportions. Remember how those things work together, and it'll make a lot more sense to you. All right? So look at question number three. Um, Jay, would you read that one for us? The circle below has a diameter of 60. What is the length and length of the arc and length of the length of 
Okay. And what it looks like? Okay, so step one, what are they asking? Would that be this right here? Yeah. Okay. Well, they want to know that that length, okay? And what in, what information did they give us in step two? What information do we have? Okay. So that angle is sixty. Do we know anything else? Oh, the diameter is six. Okay. We know the diameter is six. One is all in. Which means the radius is what? Okay. The entire diameter is six going across. All right. Looking at our formula up there, again, which information, again, doesn't change? That one. And we want to find this. So, can we, do we know this piece of information? Do we know that sector angle? They gave us that, right? And what is that? What is that angle? So we've got a piece of the puzzle, right? We've got the 60 over 360, which is this center part, and they're asking for the arc length. So you just need to find the circumference. Does that work? Okay. So we know we have 60 over 360. Let's simplify that. Can we simplify 60 over 360? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can start by just taking away the zeros, and then six, yeah. 36 divided by 6 means we're looking at 1, 6. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we know again it's our arc length over our what? Okay. So again, it's this length over the entire length equals this angle over the entire circumference. What, <coughs> what is our formula for circumference? Okay, they gave us the diameter. So would that be 6 pi? Okay, so if we have the arc length over 6 pi equals 1 over 6, then what is our arc length? Alright. How'd you get that? Cross, cross multiply? Yeah. Okay. So it's 6 pi equals 6. Is that right? What is it? Yeah, this is what it's called. Now what's this? Okay, multiply the right side or the left side by 6 pi. Multiply both sides by 6 pi. So you want this to be 6, and this is x, so I think of it as x, right? Let's call it x. You want this to be 6 pi x? 6 pi x is x. And you said you were going to multiply both sides by 6 pi, right? Yeah. And you get x by itself. Okay. So what is x equal? Right. If you cross multiply, you get 6x equals x pi, right? Isn't that what you just said? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So x equals pi. Now what do we do? Are we done? Is that our answer? Okay. They ask us what? The arc length. We solve for it. We got that as pi, and that is our answer. That's our answer A, correct? Yes, A. Very good. Fantastic. Good work. Okay. So let's talk about some other complex figures. We just finished page 433. I'm sorry, we finished page 432. We're going to 433. And we've got some information up at the top. Um, hey, did you read that for us? The fill in the blank part? Okay, and the, and the fill in is to transfer information from one shape to another. Okay, just like I said before, you find 
the information, that the information they give you, and you work your way around the figure to solve for whatever it is you need, whether it's the radius, whether it's the diameter, or whether it's the arc length, whatever, whatever we're dealing with. So look at that figure that they have drawn there. And they ask actually a question, what roles are, are played by OQ in that figure? But what else do you see? Let me start with, what do you see? What is that figure start with? What is that shape? It's half of a circle, right? <laughs> what? A tractor? It's not an amateur tractor, it's a pro tractor, right? Okay. Anyway, they got all kinds of lines and things going off to the next one. Um, so it's a half, you have a half a circle. So what what information do you see in there that you might be able to use if, depending on how they ask the question? Okay. They said this line and this line are parallel. What about the parts of this? What is what is this right here? Okay, we have a diameter. Does that mean do we also have a radius? Okay. Because why, why is that? Why do we know we have a radius? What information do they give us to tell us that? Okay, it says the center is an O, right? Okay. Okay, so we know that we have a radius, we know the diameter. What do we know about that red line there? That O R, what is that? Okay, that's another radius. What else do you see in the figure? Okay, is that a number of radii? Yeah. Okay. What else is in there? Do you see any triangles? Okay, lots of triangles. So the, they asked the question, what role is played by OQ? So what is OQ in that figure? It's a radius. And what else is it? A side of the triangle. Okay. Any one of the triangles it's a side of? It's a big one. It's a big one, okay. So yeah, it's the side of new different triangles. So just again, keep that in mind when they give you a figure. Look at what they give you. Look at the information you have, and see how do you need to work your way around to actually get it. So you're going to be transferring information from one shape to another. Look at question number four. And who has the play today? Wait, you want to read another one? Sure. In the figure above, a rectangle of BSBA is inscribed in circle with the Q and radius thirteen. If the length of line FG is 10, where's the area of rectangle PFG? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Just a second to put it up here, and we will talk about what we have. All right, let's start off with what is the question? What are they asking us? What is the area of the rectangle? Okay. The, tri the rectangle EFGH, we want to know the area. What is our area formula for a rectangle? Okay. Length times width, base times height, how do you want to look at it? So it would be the length of HG times the length of FG, right? right. Okay. What other information do they give us? Okay, read through there that we have a rectangle inscribed in a circle, right. center of Q, and a radius of 13. Okay, so we have a radius of 13. Again, fill these things in when you're doing these problems as you get information to see if you can get to where you need to be. So, if we can find this side and this side, we can find the answer, right? Because we want to know the base times the height. What information do we have if we take that? I'm sorry, what other information did they give us that we didn't mention? The length of F line FG. Okay, so we have this equals 10 over here. So do we have two sides of a right triangle? Do we know this is a right triangle? We know it's a right angle, let's start there. Okay, because they said it was a rectangle, right? Right. Which by definition means it has to be a right angle. So is this a right triangle? All right. So do we have enough information to solve for 
the other side. Okay. So what do we do next? Pythagorean formula. Okay. That's one way. The Pythagorean, whatever it is. Yes, you can certainly use the Pythagorean theorem here, but is there an easier way? Thank you, Faye. There is a triple. Okay, remember our triple? Remember our triplets? There's one. What's the, what's the other one you need to remember? 13. Okay. Again, don't forget your multiples of those. Okay. And they go on from there. So you also have. At the very least, memorize those four. I mean, it's, it's two different triplets, and it's a multiple of, of, of each of them. So looking at what you have here, you know your diameter, I'm sorry, yeah, your diameter, which is your hypotenuse, is what? Okay. And you've got this side. So what do we know the top is? And we solve from there. Okay. So obviously this, I mean most people would look at this and say this is the base, same thing. 24 times 10 is what? We got our answer. Are we done? Okay. E is the answer. So again, you just look at the information they gave you. Start with obviously what is the question, what information they give it, fill it in. And look for those triplets, look for the easy ways to get to the answers on these things. Alright? Alright, y'all are doing great. A little bit further. Alright, look at page 434. Okay, we've got some more complex figures we're going to work with. And we have some formulas for volumes. Okay, if the area of a rectangle Based on height or length times width, how you want to do it. Okay. So what we have here is the volume of a rectangular solid is what? Okay. If we go with the, the, the width and the length, we've got one extra dimension here, right? So you just take the length times the width. Actually, the width. Okay. Length times width times height will give us the volume of a rectangular solid. Alright. How about a right cylinder? They show a right cylinder there. What is the volume of a right cylinder? Yeah, that's right. Is that right? Okay. I don't understand my possible connection. But you know the area of the top or the bottom is pi r squared, correct? And you just take it times the height, like you said. Take it times the height, give you that volume of that right cylinder. How about the surface area of a rectangular solid? If we come over here, what is surface area? What is our normal area formula for any like a rectangle? I'm sorry, what is the, yeah. What is the surface area of this figure? Let's start with the front. What is the surface area? What is the area of the front? That's length and this is height. Does that be length times height is the surface area? The area of the front? Is there another one just like that? On the back side. So let's take two of those, right? And what about this side over here? What is that area? Okay. Is there another one just like it over here? And then what is our last one? We've done the front, this side. Can you do the top and the bottom? And if you have trouble visualizing these things, think about a room like this. You know, the front could be the front wall, the back wall, you've got the side wall, you've got the ceiling, you've got the floor. We need the ceiling and the floor. What is the area of the floor in this case, or the, or the base? Okay, and we have another one on top, right? And can we just add those three to get our surface area? 
Okay, pretty much straightforward. So look at question number five there. I'm going to use some of this information. And Wes, did you read that one for us? Okay. So what are they asking you? What is the question? Okay. So they want to know the base of the rectangular box. What? What is? How is that represented in that figure? That they gave? N times P. So we're looking for N times P, right? And that's what we need. Okay, what information have they given us? Okay. Okay, obviously, again, that's by definition of being a cube. And they also give it to us as M, M, and M, which is 3. So they said the area. On the volume of the cube is 64. Did you get any other information? Okay. All right. Any ideas what we do with this? We got the volume of the cube. We know that the sides are equal on this. The edges are equal, and we're looking for n times p. What do you see common in these two figures? M. Okay, so good thing to do might be to solve for M, don't you think? Can we do that with what information we have here? Okay, so what is the formula for the volume of that cube? Okay, M times N times M or M cubed. And well, we know that equals 64, right? So what is M? It's square root, oh, I'm sorry, the cube root is 64, so M equals 4. Okay, we can fill that in if we want to bring that over. So now we know what are the dimensions on our rectangle, on our rectangular solid, right? Or M equals 4. What is the formula for the volume of that rectangular solid? Okay, M times M times C. And we know M equals 4. So that is the volume. We said that equals 224, right? So what do we do? Hey, can you see what we're doing here? What do we do here? What did we say we were looking for? Still the area of the thing. Still did it, didn't we? We're looking for this, right? Okay, we divide both sides by 4. That becomes 1, that becomes what? So n, n times p is 56. Is that what we were looking for? Is that our answer? Okay, that's the area of the base. That's the same as n times p. And we just plugged in the formula and backed it out and came up with 56. So that works great. Okay. Uh, last page again on content, complex figures on page 445. As with complex figures problems, many difficult solved problems are best attacked by finding similar shapes within the shape, especially like triangles. So I mentioned on circles, we're almost always looking for what? Okay, radius. They may give it to you as a diameter, they may give you the radius, or they may give you enough information to get to it. On most uh, complex figures, a lot of the solids look for right triangles. So look at your question here, number six. In the cube above, the length of each edge is three. What is the straight line distance from vertex A to vertex B? Now stay with me on this one because this one can get a little bit tricky. If that is A, and that's B. Okay, so the question is, they want to know what? Um, the distance between A and B. Okay. All right. What other, what other, what 
information did they give us? Okay. Now again, picture this room if you're having trouble with that. If this room is that cube and A is in that corner, where is B? Yeah, A's over there, but B is going to be in the opposite corner. So that line we're talking about is going right through the room, right? It doesn't follow any of our edges. It's going through the, it's actually going through it, okay? So what do we say we want to look for? Complex figure, solid, what are we looking for? What's, it, what's up, something we always want to look for in a figure like this? Remember what we put up above? Especially right triangles. Okay, right, your right triangle is going to be your key to solving this. So looking at that figure, do you see where any right triangles might be? And again, think about this room. If there's a line running from that corner to that corner, could you make a right triangle anywhere using that line? Where would where would C be in our room? If that's A and that's B in the bottom corner, where's C? But these drop straight down from A, right? Again, kind of conceptualize this. A, C is just straight down from there, so it's the bottom corner. Okay, now think about it. you've got a line running diagonally across, you've got a line running down the corner, can you make a right angle anywhere? Anywhere in that figure. Can you run a line from that corner across the floor to that corner and make a right angle in the bottom corner? Which would be what? Okay, so that triangle would actually have a right angle can't see it real well, but if you looked at it from again from the side and pictured it, you've got a right angle. Now what do we know about that? Do we know any of the sides? Um, no. We know this one, right? And let's look at this this new figure we made across the bottom. Again, we've got a line running across the floor, right? Where is B? A's there, B's there, C's there, where's B? That's B already, we said. Good thing. B over here? Okay. Alright. So look at that. Let's go let's go with our floor now. We've got a line running across the floor diagonally. We've got C D, which is running across the front. And DB running down the side. So we actually have a, if you look at it from above, that's what you're looking at, right? This is A and C over here. This is C. There's your B. So do I have a right triangle there? What are my sides? Right? Well, everybody stay with me. Like I said, this is the, this is the kind of stuff they're going to throw at you. On the test, so you've got to conceptualize these things and say, where can I find right angles? Where can I find right triangles? I may have to look very carefully to find them. They're not going to jump right out at you. But again, if we're looking down from the top of the figure, and we see that, we know we have three and three and whatever our diagonal is running across the floor. So what, how do we come up with that, that distance, that diagonal running across the floor? Remember the triangle we had earlier? That was C. And remember we had a 45, 45, 90? Is that what we have here? Yeah. And we know that our sides are X, X, X root 2. Okay? So what do we know X is in this case? Okay? Is that what we have? So where where is this in this figure? 
Okay? And so we know that's what this is. Now we're going to go back to that first triangle we created from the top corner to the bottom corner, straight down and then across the floor. We know the edge, which is three, right? We know our diagonal across the floor now. Sorry, is that right? Yeah. That's the one we just came up with, which is three root two. So this is the only thing we have to figure. But we've got a new um, 45, 45, 90, don't we? Okay. What is our, what did we say this was? And what is our edge here? Okay. Now it's actually it's not 45, 45, 90, but what can we do now to solve for this? Now you're in parallel. So what do we do? Can you walk me through this? We said this was this was A B. Is that what we have? 3 squared plus 3 root 2 squared equals AB squared. What's next? Well, what's 3 squared? What is 3 root 2 squared? Okay, 3 squared is 9 times 3. Okay, so we have 9 times 3 equals 18. So that was AB squared, okay? All right, so what's 9 plus 18? So what is D? How do we get? What is C? Can you take the square root of 27? Okay. Is that our answer? What's that? Okay, we have to factor out the 9, right? So this is... That becomes, okay, is that our answer? Okay, do you see what I'm talking about? You have to find the right triangle in these figures. You know, that, this one's complicated. But when you get into something like this, think about the room you're in or think about something three dimensional that you can visualize a lot easier, and that'll actually make it work. Okay? All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's look at our uh, guided group work. If you would, go to page 439 and do problems 1, 2, 3, and then go to 446 and do number 11.